Welcome to the next S4D webinar with Joost Hertz from New York Pizza. So before I introduce Joost, I will tell you about the agenda that we have today. First of all, we're going to talk about the omni-channel approach, especially for New York Pizza. How to elevate your customer experience, a step-by-step -step guide. And then implementing marketing campaigns, dominating national and local markets. And then we will look at some key insights, industry trends, and Q&A. So when you have questions, drop them in the Q&A, and at the end, we will answer them. Yeah, or not. If the, if yeah, they're if they're too difficult for you, then we don't. I will not reveal our, all our secrets. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so uh, yeah, what do we do with S4D? With S4D, we provide an omni-channel solution for restaurant brands, whereby, whereby we enable brands to be available on all order channels that they want. But now, back to you, Joost. Yeah. Can you maybe quickly introduce yourself? Yeah. First of all, uh, thanks for having me. It's always nice to, let's say, share knowledge and information with uh, other colleagues at the other side of, uh, of the camera. Things like this I use often myself to learn from the industry and to learn uh, what is going on and what other colleagues are doing. So it's also nice to give something back in, in a way. So uh, I will not reveal all our secrets today, but I will, let's say, uh, share a couple of learnings that we benefited a lot of uh, lot from. So uh, that's what I will do. Yeah, Joost, I'm the CMO at New York Pizza, uh, responsible for marketing, digital and category management. Well, if you ask me, one of the best jobs within the company, of <laughs> course, but good to hear. Everybody is saying that because uh, it's really nice to, to be at New York Pizza. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm there for five years almost and uh, yeah, had a cool journey with COVID incorporated that had a lot of challenges before COVID and now we're in the period after COVID. Uh, and digital is an important part of that. So uh, five years. So what has been your biggest accomplishment in these five years? Um, well, multiple things. I'm really proud of everything that we have accomplished with the team so far, because it's really a team effort and New York Pizza is relatively small. Actually, yeah, we have a small head office because it's a 100% franchise uh, company. Okay. So we accomplish it all with a small team together with our franchisees. So that's also really uh, always really cool and it makes me really proud. Uh, in sp specifically, I'm really proud of what we have accomplished with the brand. So I think especially the people from, uh, from the Netherlands, they all know, I think, our uh, slogan, it's the dough, our dough, our secret. Uh, I think consumers can even dream it. Uh, <laughs> it's that's, the dough, that's dough, a big dough. accomplishment that's really helping us not only to be uh, top of mind with consumers, that's really important, but also to, let's say, work and develop more brand preference. So that if they think about pizza, they think about New York pizza because of our secret, and that they yeah they want to have the best pizza of course. Uh, and next to that, I'm really proud of let's say how we have developed digital in the last couple of years. Eh? So our platform is really important for us, but also how we use our platform and our data on a local store by store level to grow revenue. Okay. So that's uh, we're going to uh, go deeper into that because well, I think that is that is one of the secrets. Let's do that. And uh, yeah, I ask you to do this. And uh, how it sounds like you're a busy man. What, why did you agree to to do this? Well, yeah, um, I'm happy with let's say how we work together. Uh, so therefore, uh, I'm I'm here also to let's say tell more about how we do that, and maybe other people can benefit from that. Yeah, and what I already said before, I learn a lot from other colleagues uh, that, let's say, share learnings uh, with their uh, their audiences on LinkedIn, webinars, podcasts, etc. So it's also nice to, let's say, uh, do that in return and to learn from each other. Okay, just uh, so can you maybe ex yeah, explain your relationship with S4D then uh, yeah. to be fully transparent? Yeah, and maybe one call to action. So uh, if you have learnings that you would like to share with me, uh, let's connect on LinkedIn afterwards. But, okay. uh, that's, that's a good one. You're going to get some messages probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. No sales messages, please. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's not fair. Yeah. No, so yeah, the relationship with S4D. So uh, yeah, we, S4D is, is, is quite an important system for us. Eh? So uh, our platform, so the e-commerce platform towards consumers, the website, the app, but also self-ordering kiosks, etc. Yeah, that's something we do together. And uh, so everything consumer facing is together with S4D. Also the connection with third parties, so the orders that come in through either Justy Takeaway or Uber, also integrated with our system, so all consumers actually communicate through S4D with us, uh, and it's our backbone for our operational part of the business. So it brings everything together and it enables us to, let's say, manage everything and to gather data about how to improve the business and to learn from everything we do. Awesome. So let's dive into actually the first topic, that yeah. omni-channel approach. Like, 
I think there are different words what means omnichannel, but what is omnichannel according to you? Yeah, for me, and uh, yeah, I personally always look uh, with a marketing uh, perspective uh, towards a topic like this. And omnichannel for me is, let's say, 360. Uh, so it's not only having every channel there for consumers to order, yeah. uh, like the app, the website, a third party connection, or people walking into a store. For me, omnichannel is also 360 marketing campaigns. Okay. So no matter how we reach out to you, uh, old school, offline with a flyer uh, in your hands, for example, or an online campaign that we run. Uh, for me, Omnichannel is integrating all of that and making sure that if we do something old school offline, that we can measure it offline or that we can measure the effect of it if people order and how that all comes together in our system. Okay, interesting. You say, huh, you do the old school flyers, so how, and you want these people to order online. Yeah. So how do you connect that? Well, yeah, an old school flyer is just an example, of course. I think the majority is definitely online or uh, bigger things like uh, uh, social advertising or even television commercials are still really important for us. Um, but yeah, of course, when we bring the offline world towards the online world, yeah, we always try to make sure that we can measure it in a way, that, uh, at least. So yeah, uh, imagine unique coupons that we configure in S4D and that we use on the flyers to measure the redemption rate, for example, yeah. or certain URLs that you can use that we know what traffic is coming towards the website from which flyer or campaign that we do. And with that, you cannot measure everything. You also don't want to measure everything, mm -hmm. but you can measure at least the most important things to understand what is working, what is not working, and how can we improve. Okay, so when you say omnichannel, you actually say you have a 360 uh, marketing approach that you yeah. can follow your yeah. customers or yeah the customer that you want everywhere. Yeah. And then uh, if you see Omnichannel in a different way, it's like to be at all the sales channels or order channels, you can say maybe yeah, even better, definitely. where your customer is. Okay. We, we want to be there where the consumer is in the end. Exactly. Yeah, so if they are in the need of pizza or if they would like to have pizza, we want to be there and to want to make it as easy as possible to order. So that's of course step one. Yeah. And But with marketing, we try to push people towards those ordering channels, of course. Okay. And that's, I think, where we bring it all together. And what is the key ingredient in owning that customer journey? Uh, well, I think in the end, it's understanding who your customer is okay. and, uh, and what their behavior is, what their preferences are. And if you want to know that, you need the data of the customers. Uh, so. Of course, we work together with third parties like uh, Just Eat Takeaway and Uber Eats, and they're really important for us. Eh? We also want to be there. Uh, but I think a key ingredient is to have your own platform and to have your own data about your own customers and to understand when do they order, what do they order, how do they order, uh, to really understand, okay, uh, how can we develop new products that they like? Or how can we improve campaigns to make sure that we reach out to them in a relevant way instead of spamming them with marketing that they don't want? And if you want to do that, you need your own platform and data, in, and that's my vision, to really understand uh, what they want, who they are, and to uh, improve on a day-by-day -day basis. Maybe to make it a bit more clear, what do you mean with own platform? Uh, yeah, uh, a website, newyourpizza.nl or newyourpizza.de, uh, and making sure that you can order there in an easy way. Uh, and with that, that we can help you in the best way possible. And maybe also an app, right? Definitely, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So if you have, you have a consumer, what do you prefer him or she to order from? Your website or your app? Uh, well, I prefer them to order and it doesn't matter how. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we want to make it as easy as possible. So it uh, doesn't matter how you want to order, we make it as easy as possible. But in the end, yeah, we prefer, of course, to let's say have the app as the, the preferred channel. Why? Uh, from a marketing perspective, again, is the best way for us to help the customer. Uh, so uh, we mainly ask them to log in as well. With that, they get quite some benefits. Uh, I will talk about it in a sec. But with that, say, they get a lot of benefits. But if they're logged in, we understand way better who we have on that screen. And with that, we can, let's say, communicate in a different way. We can say, hi, Dan, instead of hi. Uh, yeah. And it, it's already more relevant. Or we can, let's say, push the pizzas that you love the most instead of products that maybe are not relevant to you because maybe you're a vegetarian and a meat pizza is on top. Yeah. I want these meat pizzas. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> we will make sure that, uh, that you true, true. So you give a more personalized experience in the app because yeah, yeah they, because also on the website sometimes maybe you're not logged in and you, you miss that and yeah. people need to log yeah. in later. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. clear. Yeah, so we, we try to persuade a lot of people not only to order through our own channels but also become a member. 
Yeah. Uh, so something over a year ago, we have launched the loyalty program as part of uh, yeah, the, the overall S4D system. And the loyalty program is, let's say, a program where we give a lot of benefits if you give a bit of your data towards us. Yeah, so but to us. Can you give a bit an example of these benefits? Um, yeah, so with every order, you can earn pizza points, uh, yeah. really translated, uh, pizza punt, and it's, nice, uh, it's nicer in Dutch. But you can order points or uh, get points as a reward. And with those points, you can get free products or you can get special discounts. But what we also do if we launch something new, we exclusively do it towards members first, for example. Okay. I think I think you guys have like two or three tiers. How does that work then yeah. with that points? Yeah, we have three tiers in total. So it's a green member, our brand color, and uh, in the Dutch you can say you're still a groentje. Yeah, so yeah. You're first, you're for, for the starter. international for the international community, uh, a groentje. What does it mean exactly? Yeah, you're just starting out. Yeah. Or something like that. A newbie. A newbie. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so you're still a newbie when you start out uh, as a green member, but already have quite some benefits. Uh, so you, uh, for 50 points, for example, so every euro you spend is one point. And for 50 points, you can already get a free product, for example. So after two, like three a cookie orders, or something. Yeah, two, three orders, depending on the average order value, of course, of that consumer, you can already get a free something. Uh, so that's nice to, to make sure that people order again after a first order to make sure that they get that free uh, present the next time. Of course, when it's your birthday, we have a nice present for you. And with that, we try to motivate you to order more and more often yeah. to make sure that you can go up a tier towards silver, for example. And with that, even more benefits and you can even go towards gold. Okay. And with that, more benefits. Okay. Yeah. So a benefit could be, I'm not sure if you do that, but then maybe uh, discount on delivery or free delivery yeah. if you're on that gold tier. Yeah, so it's about... Uh, making them feel special, eh, yeah. remember? So free products always works, of course, because everybody wants everything for free. Uh, that wor always works nice, and uh, good offers also work fine, but we also want to make our member feel special. So if we have a collaboration with a certain brand or uh, uh, um, uh, companies like Coca-Cola, Ben & Jerry's, eh, the, the products that we also have in our assortment, if we do a special promotion, we also do it member exclusive. Okay. And so a new product introduction, they're the first to try. So a new a new taste of ice cream or maybe yeah. a new pizza yeah. or as so a customer experience and we will uh, go into it I think uh, dive, deep dive into yeah. it later but it's also making them feel special to make sure they're like okay yeah I prefer New York pizza because I don't get only free products but I also can get something special in return that you maybe not expect you're triggering with the word that you said like the uh, order value yeah so how do you use uh, your website and app to yeah to improve that order value. Well, what we see, for example, and I think uh, colleagues from the QSR business will recognize this, is that uh, th there are several channels. Eh? People picking up in store and m many times the order value is a bit lower because different pricing or special offers for takeout. Uh, third party versus our own platform, both online, and we see a higher average order value on our own platform simply because we understand our consumer better and we can influence it. Eh? So okay. we do quite some A-B testing to understand what works better how we can upsell a consumer, how we can uh, cross-sell a consumer, so put something in your order extra or making sure that you go maybe for that bigger size. Uh, and by understanding the consumers on our own platform, yeah, we can influence that in a good way. Okay. And so uh, by upsizing to a certain cross size, yeah, for us that was a big step towards, for example, a higher order value. Okay, so big learning. Hi, you mentioned now EB testing. The first thing I'm thinking about is then a conversion. Yeah. So how is that something yeah, maybe you can explain what is conversion and how yeah. what is your yeah what are your goals on that side yeah, yeah conversion is of course uh, in the end it's how many people do visit your platform and uh, also place an order yeah and uh, the number of people placing orders yeah, the conversion rate in the end and we always try to increase that by making the journey as easy as possible or to be as relevant as possible for example uh, and it's always a balance because i rather have more orders uh, compared to only a higher order value, because yeah. that means that you have more people in your database that you can attract more often, for example. Okay. But you need to find that that's always it's a kind a, of a balance, balance, right? It's a balance, and it's also really uh, shattered because the one consumer is not the same as the other consumer, so it's also targeting certain A-B tests on certain groups even. Okay. So, yeah, maybe for the audience, like, if you talk about omnichannel, huh? yeah. why is that, why is an omnichannel approach yeah, a must, in what I'm hearing, why is that a must for, for restaurant chains? Um, well, I think in the end, uh, it's really important that if you can understand your customer in the right way, there's, let's say, a bright future. 
because if you understand why people are buying or why they're not buying or what they like or what they don't like, yeah, you can use that to improve your business, your operation, uh, your assortment, the marketing campaigns. It's, it's what you need to understand your own business and to move forward. Okay, okay. I think yeah, in the end, is, yeah, if you don't have that, you're, let's say, what are you doing? Steering a black box? Exactly. So actually, talk, you started to talk about data. So let's go to elevate that customer experience. Uh, yeah. And what is, what is this strategy for New York Pizza? And yeah, what does that mean? So data, KPIs, what is, what is your main metric in that? Um, well, yeah, we have multiple metrics indeed, uh, but one of the most important ones maybe is NPS. NPS. Explain um, what that is. Well, yeah, it's, yeah, I think uh, many of us know it. It's Net Promoter Score, and I think it's good to Google it if you don't know exactly how it works, because it will take up maybe too much of the webinar. But NPS is, uh, in short, it's will people recommend you after buying uh, your product? Yeah, so would you would I recommend it? Oh, I had a really good experience in New York. You should do it as well. And if that would mean that you have a really high NPS, and if you would not recommend it, even would say don't order at New okay. Pizza, it would be really low. When do you ask these questions? It's always after the order for us. So yeah. after people ate the pizza, got the pizza and ate the pizza, we will ask you the questions. Well, how did you like the pizza? Would you recommend us to friends or family? Uh, and, a, and a couple of questions more even. Okay. So to understand specific on a product level, how do you like the product for us to let's say improve the product if it was not good or to understand why the product was good. Uh, and to also understand the overall experience. What did you think about the delivery itself? Or how was the experience on our platform? We all ask that to really understand better how we can improve the customer experience. As I think all about creating a certain wow moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so at first it should be as easy as possible to order, of course. If you have a lot of hassle ordering, people go away already. Yeah, you, so don't, you don't want to know some, web time, some, no. some, some web time, websites I, I see sometimes. I know, I know, I struggle myself sometimes. <laughs> No, but it should be as easy and as clear as possible. And within that journey, you want to actually exceed expectations. Yeah? So that you're like, oh, well, this is cool. Or especially in our business. And uh, again, I think a lot of colleagues uh, are, are, let's say, facing this challenge. It's really difficult to deliver everything in time. Uh, definitely in the Netherlands, we have a shortage of, let's say, people that work in our stores yeah. for our franchisees. So it's really difficult if you get all in all those orders to manage expectations of your customer, to be in time, to have all orders completely delivered uh, in time at every doorstep. Uh, so we also use our platform to manage those expectations. Okay. And so we see a higher NPS, for example, it happens that orders are too late. And you, you expect it within maybe half an hour and maybe it takes 45 minutes. Could be. True, true. If you don't tell about it or don't talk about it with your customer during that waiting time, they will get annoyed, they will pick up the phone, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that will make sure that they will not recommend you afterwards. Uh, and if you manage those expectations in a really good way, and that's really difficult if it's not your own platform. Because I think you just launched a new uh, feature for this, right? Some AI, some cool stuff. Oh, correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have the old school way of managing step by step. We're preparing your pizza. It's currently in the oven or the yeah. delivery. Uh, These are the funny gifts, way. right? Yeah, yeah. We make it also a bit funny. And uh, the waiting time is always the most difficult time. So we make it fun. And uh, we also have a, a playlist on Spotify that you can use in the meantime, or we uh, make available a certain game that you could use. So do we understand it right that the, the customer who ordered can follow when is the pizza, when is the order being placed, when yeah. it's in the oven, yeah. out of the oven, and on, on the way? Uh, yeah, not to, uh, let's say, uh, do a sales pitch about S4D, but this is actually the nice thing. Yeah? So it's consumer facing on the one hand, and on the other hand, in the store, the, the how they use the system that is given back to the consumer as feedback yeah, so literally there's a screen in the store the pizza comes in and as soon as the consumer orders they create the pizza and they say it's in the oven when they put it in the oven and the consumer gets feedback at that same time your pizza is in the oven currently and so you're currently up to date on where your product is to make sure that we manage your expectations exactly yeah and the fun, the good thing of course is we we know how that works but it's also difficult to tell you exactly the right time when your product will be there. Because there, yeah, it could be bad weather, it could be that the driver is maybe sick that day or whatever. So currently uh, we are using also an AI model, we have it as a pilot running currently, to take all those data points and let's say use that to predict as good as possible what your estimated time of arrival is. 
And what we currently see, it's a pilot with uh, quite a big group of stores that the MPS and the customer satisfaction that of the people that have that system versus the normal system goes up because we, yeah, we can predict in way better ways uh, what the ETA is of uh, delivery, for example. Yeah, yeah, and you do that also with the sticky notification that stays yeah, on your yeah. home screen, so yeah, yeah. that extra experience. Maybe going back to that KPIs and MPS, right? Yeah. How do you use this to also, uh, you say 100% franchise? Yeah. So how do you use this data towards the franchisees yeah. and the stores? Yeah. Because they're key, of course, well, to be successful. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, one of the other things I'm really proud of. Eh? So MPS is not only something that the marketing department knows, it's something that uh, the operations department understands. It's something that every franchisee uh, franchisee knows and understands. Uh, so every franchisee in every store has a dashboard, MPS dashboard, and they all know their own MPS. Yeah. And with that, they can improve their business on a daily basis because if the MPS goes down, it's most often because delivery times are going up, so they need to manage that or they can manage that, or because products are not good enough, maybe uh, not enough salami on the salami pizza. And they all learn that as feedback from the customers in their systems. And if you see, hey, my NPS is going down, what is going on? And with that, they can, let's say, train the team, or we can help them to train the team to improve their business again. Yeah. And with that, yeah, in the end, it's not about marketing, it's not about... Uh, in the, the end, it's about a delicious pizza. It's about pizza. the best pizza in time with the consumers. And that's the best marketing there is. Okay. And, and this is helping them. Okay. And that that is then also, how do the stores do that like between them? With leaderboards or something? Well, yeah, we, uh, we uh, like the competition between the stores, of course. And I think uh, most of our franchisees like the competition as well. So they see how they are performing versus their region. Okay. And versus the, the nationwide uh, top sellers or the top performers. And that's, of course, triggering them to see, okay, hey, my neighbor in another city or in another uh, neighborhood are performing up. So team, how can we do this as well? And okay. so it's also a tool for them to train the team, help the team, motivate the team. But actually what I'm hearing is you're implementing the direct feedback from the consumer yeah. back to the stores yeah. to improve the operation yeah. to, in the, in the end, it's all about being yeah, selling more pizza yeah. and making the customers happy, right? Yeah, yeah. In the end, if customers are happy, they will uh, uh, order more often, and then everybody's happy, right? Yes. So indeed, listening really well to the consumers, implementing that in towards our systems and operational processes, and with the franchisees and our head office teams, bringing that together and training them and improving every day. Yeah, that's in the end what works best. Maybe coming back, huh? you're almost five years in this in this industry, like. Yeah. What changed, and you said, huh, we had pre-COVID, COVID, post-COVID, post -COVID. what, yeah, does, did the expectation of the consumer change in a way? Well, they, yeah, consumers expect a lot, but uh, yeah, if I look at myself, uh, I'm also a consumer, I also expect a lot. When I'm ordering and it says 30 minutes, I expect it within 30 minutes, of course. And so I think consumers are used to e-commerce uh, deliveries at home, and you should, let's say, deliver on your promise. Yeah. And if not, you should manage it. And especially post COVID, uh, yeah, we are facing a lot of challenges in the delivery business. So managing expectations became even more important. Okay. And so we can promise a lot of cool things and good things in marketing because that's, uh, that's what we are good at. Uh, but you should deliver and also give the tools towards franchisees and work together in a good way to uh, deliver upon the promises. Okay, clear. And maybe uh, for the audience also, like if you think about yeah, these key steps that you made in improving that customer experience. Like, yeah. what, what would you say maybe, okay, this is something that I see that was maybe a couple of years a challenge for us or maybe in the business, you think, hey, that's something if I order at other uh, brands, that could be something to improve. Yeah, if, yeah maybe it's, it's a bit of a summary of what we just discussed, but I think in the end, it starts all with listening to, to your consumer. So it could also be that you read all the reviews that are on Google Maps or just the takeaway or whatever. It's a good starting point to really understand where, let, where it, let's say, uh, it gets difficult and where you should, let's say, fix something in the customer journey. And it's not always easy, but it starts, of course, with understanding what happens, why it happens, and how you could fix it. And implementing that in your day-to-day -day processes from a marketing perspective, also operational perspective, but also giving the tools towards your franchisees or the store managers. And that's, I think, the basic to start out with. And managing expectations 
is uh, I think uh, step step two. How do you make sure that if something happens or goes wrong or even goes really well, how do you make sure that the consumer also knows it? Okay, you trigger me with one thing, huh? because you have a lot of platforms where consumers can give reviews, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. On Google, maybe on Uber, maybe yeah. on Just Eat Takeaway. But actually, when I'm hearing, you created your own yeah. review channel, right? Yeah. Where yeah. you ask for it more proactively. Yeah, so yeah, in the end, uh, we use it all, right? So we also look at the reviews that we get in through, let's say, a Just Eat Takeaway channel, for example, because they're as important as our own. But through our own channel, we're able to ask questions in a different way or uh, more questions, for example, so it gives us more insights. Awesome. So let's let's look at like how to be successful with marketing campaigns, like uh, the third yeah. subject that we discussed. Yeah. And you have something, you do something on a national level and a local level. Yeah. Yeah, can you maybe explain what is your different tactics or strategies between that national and, and local? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so uh, in the end, it should all come together. Uh, we are selling a brand, we're selling a great product, and that should be all, uh, all should all come together. So it's for us also really important to do this uh, together with our franchisees. Uh, they're the ones in the end that should deliver the promise. Yeah. So together with them, we also develop the promise. Uh, so if we do product introductions or new product development, we really involve a lot of partners to align, to think about how it could work best. Okay. So therefore it starts out early in time already together with them. So you have then a franchisee board or something? A board and committees. Okay. Let's say align with them. Okay, what is your experience in the store? What is our experience based on the data that we have and how can we bring those two worlds together? So I think that's really important. You should really do it together in that, uh, that respect. Um, and I think in the end, it's also making sure that if we promise something in marketing, let's say uh, a big promo where uh, where you get a big discount, yeah, the volumes go up in the store. We should make sure together with the franchisees that they can manage. Yeah, and on the operational course, side. That's, yeah, that's always challenging, but you need to bring those two worlds together. Yeah, so I think that's, that's really important uh, to do in the end. Um, so maybe define a bit better, because I think this is a challenge, especially maybe that change yeah. that are opening a new store or... Yeah. Uh, yeah, what is, in your opinion, local marketing or maybe some best practices yeah. when you have a new store opening? Yeah. What, what are the things that you well, do? Nationwide, we, of course, we are one brand and we need to make sure that people recognize New York Pizza in one way, no matter to what store you, uh, what store you will visit. Uniformity. And what store you yeah. Will, yeah, and we're creating a brand for not only today, but also for the long term that people recognize, want to connect with, want to order with, or want to be part with. And so brand is really important on a national level. And we have nationwide campaigns to make sure that a new product is available everywhere or a certain promo is available everywhere that everyone in the Netherlands knows. Yes, we need to be at New Year Pizza right now. Awesome. But that's only valid till so far because every store is also a bit different. And so as a chain, we develop a lot of brand and, and nationwide promotions. But we develop maybe even more local promotions, but we facilitate a lot of things. Okay. So it's not uh, so stores can do a lot of things themselves. Uh, a certain promo with the local uh, sports club, or a certain promo with other stores nearby them, or something, or a, or an own flyer or whatever. But I think what even more important is how do we bring those two worlds together? Uh, so digital is really important for us. So how do we bring local towards the nationwide digital platform, and how do we connect those two worlds? Uh, and what we did is actually we developed uh, online campaigns, but on a store by store level. So we know that we are not active in every postal code in the Netherlands, but we have stores with certain delivery areas. Yeah. So what we did is we don't do online nationwide marketing. We just don't do it. Okay. Because most of the marketing systems, and maybe there are some exceptions, but let's say Google, Meta, and the, the let's say the big tech companies, they enable you to really target on a store level. Well, that's also saving you money. Yeah? So we are in the lucky position that we're already at 300 locations. So we have quite a big coverage in the Netherlands. But if you're smaller, it's really hard to do nationwide marketing. It's really expensive and there's a lot of waste. And so what we do, we have the delivery areas of the stores. Yeah. We know from as for the which stores, which delivery areas, delivery areas. And we connect those to, let's say, advertising systems. And those advertising systems could be Google, Meta, or tools that we put in between to help us. And with that, we target different campaigns on different delivery areas. So imagine we're in a month like February, and right now, every store has a different campaign running. Of course, 
not 300 different campaigns. We have a selection of X amount of campaigns that they can choose from. And so we make it easy on them to choose a campaign and we facilitate that because we have the data and we can automate a lot of things with tools that we connect to S4D. Okay, so to make it a bit, so actually that even that online marketing you do locally yeah. together with the franchisees, but the execution is in the yeah. HQ with running the campaigns yeah. and all of that. So, so the franchisees understand it can choose what they want. Yeah. And we facilitate it and organize it. We do that with an agency. We do it together with a lot of tools. And it's a big collaboration of the marketing team, the operations team, and, uh, and, uh, and the franchisees together. But they can choose, yeah, let's pick this campaign this month. We facilitate everything because we can automate a lot of things. Okay. And we have the data to understand which delivery areas, which consumers do we already know, uh, which customers do we have to target, to get out retention, uh, to make sure that they come back again and who are potential new customers and how can we target them. And we are facilitating the online part because we have the data and the systems to do so. And what we ask the franchisees to do and how we collaborate in a good way is they can, of course, make it work by also putting flyers in mailboxes locally or making sure that they have really good POS materials in store to also make sure that if people pass by the store that they know that there's a good product. Okay. And how do you manage that also there's uniformity in these flyers? Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, working together as teams. So uh, marketing team has a big role in that, our operational team has a big role in that and part in that, and our franchisees are working together in a good way and aligning, yeah, is making sure that we can uh, deliver on this. Okay, so l let's dive a bit into the data, right? Yeah. How does New York Pizza yeah, uses this customer data and analytics to personalize, yeah, you said it already a yeah, bit, yeah. to personalize this local marketing campaign and yeah. make sure it aligns with the national brand and yeah. everything well, bringing together. I think uh, I, I'm not here, here to reveal our biggest secrets, no, but I can course. share some learnings. And, and if you order at New York Pizza, this is something you can know, but I think a couple of really successful campaigns that we have and I think are really interesting in the QSR business is we have certain automated uh, journeys, we call it. Eh? So if so, if this, then that. Yeah. Eh? So for example, we know that we cannot always deliver up on our promise. Eh? So sometimes we're too late with uh, delivering a pizza. And what we have accomplished is if you have a pizza that is delivered too late in our own system, we know that it was too late and we trigger an automated uh, journey. And with that, we start out our sorry journey. So we, as a brand, we, we are, let's say, a bit proactive and of provocative and informal. So we literally sent you an email, sorry, we fucked up. We were too late delivering your pizza. Therefore, we have a really nice offer for you if you give us another chance. Okay. okay. And those type of campaigns, based on the data, we know how many orders were too late. It was not on, by, uh, it was not on purpose, it was by accident. We want to save the customer relationship. So those type of automated journeys really help us based on the data that we have to win back customers to make sure that they give us another chance if they had a bad experience, for example. And what do you give them then, like a coupon or voucher? Or yeah, it's, it, it, uh, it's, it, we A-B test a lot of things. So sometimes it's, sorry, we fucked up. Can you get, will you give us another chance? No discount, no, no nothing. But if we really fucked up or if it was really too late, we maybe even give you a free product okay. for next order. For and next that's, order. that's also in alignment with our franchisees because we will not give away all their product for free. That's something we... Uh, now you always need to balance that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but the other way around, if somebody orders for the first time, what I really like is uh, there's one functionality that even if you're, let's say, the baker, the, the pizza maker, uh, uh, the working with the dough, putting on the toppings, on the screen, you can already see if it's a returning or a new customer. Well, if it's a new customer, you can do something with that. Yeah? So you can do it with extra attention, but what you could also do is surprise that customer, like, hey, we're so happy that you ordered that New York pizza. There's an extra cookie or an extra product that you get for free right now. And everybody in the store knows the one creating the pizza, the one delivering the pizza, and the franchisee or the, uh, the manager in the store knows it. So and the driver. That data we use in store real time to make sure that we can capitalize on it. Interesting, interesting. And, and in the end, if we from a marketing department look at it, yeah, when somebody is uh, first order, yeah, we follow up, of course, like, hey, you, you ordered for the first time, really happy that you did so. Did you know that you can become a member and uh, that you can get uh, more benefits if you order more often? Yeah. But from a marketing perspective, the first order is yeah. the most difficult, yeah. right? And then... Not definitely, yeah, yeah. And I think in that respect, if you really look at how can you bring those two worlds together, because it's always 
nice from behind the desk to uh, to think of how it should work. But in the end, it should work in the store and it should work for the franchisee. And if they also have the data, they can also do something with it and we can help them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So that is then a big plus of having the same system for your e-commerce and your operations yeah. Yeah. that you can yeah, use this. Yeah. And this is a dream of a marketeer, right? Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, so if you also look a bit to the future, right? Yeah. What, what are you, yeah, within the QSR industry, what are some trends that are coming, do you think? Um, well, multiple. Uh, and not to use the buzzword too often, but I think AI can help us a lot. Eh? To, not to, to as the holy grail, but to do th more things more efficiently and to also be more relevant towards the consumers that we have. Uh, so uh, less hours for the same tasks that, uh, that we had before, but also being more accurate towards consumers or being more relevant towards consumers. I think AI uh, will help Hi. us with that. You started with this already, right? With that estimated yeah. time of arrival to update it yeah. along yeah. the whole journey and not say it's 30 minutes and that's yeah. it, right? Yeah, and something that will go live, uh, I think uh, this week or even next week is uh, we have an order again uh, uh, highlight. So we know what you like. So would you like to order it again? Most people, <laughs> they repeat their orders. Yeah. Uh, they're people of habits. Um, but what we also do, if you like this, you probably also like this. And that's, of course, old school a kind of recommendation engine. But let's say with, the, with AI incorporated, you can do it in a way smarter and better way. And the result is more relevant. Yeah. So I think AI in general helping us with things like this is really a, a really nice trend to, let's say, incorporate in a smart way. So and on a product level, yeah, because we know what sells really good and what the behavior of people is or... We can even see what the difference is in behavior between new customers and returning customers. It's also really, it gives us really good insights in how we could use that for product development. And so, of course, we already talk about it for years that vegetarian or even vegan is getting more and more relevant. And that's also the case, but still a lot of people also order meat. But by understanding what the product mix is doing, by understanding which pizzas are popular or what the uh, consumer ratings are, we can get more insights to develop in the directions that we think are relevant for us. Yeah, and also that like, let's say, creating the menu and optimizing the yeah. menu, that's also something you are in charge of, right? Yeah. Did I correct yeah. That? yeah, yeah. But you do it then actually with more of a marketing hat in, in that way, right? Uh, it's a combination. So at first it should fit in our store's operations, it should work in a good way, and we should do it in a scalable way with the, the materials that we have in the kitchen, the products that we have. And we do that together with franchisees to make sure that we develop things that we can also do in a uh, roll out in a good way in stores. Yeah. But yeah, of course, we want to, let's say, be first in developing new products that are relevant to people or to be first in a certain trend. Oh, and we, we launched in, uh, this, uh, in October, we've launched Tin and Crispy. So it's a pizza, still really good, but with less calories. Yeah? So a thinner crust, less cheese on it, and therefore less calories. And yeah, of course, we see that it works really well because yeah, people are more cautious about health and what they eat and how they eat. So we are constantly also tapping into those trends with the data that we have to learn how we can do that as a brand. Okay, okay. But how? just for me to understand, like, okay, you do a new product introduction, yeah. like you say, how do you, yeah, how do you use data to say this is successful or not? Well, yeah, we have a lot of... We have a lot of benchmark data from the past. Yeah. So we know what worked best and what isn't working. And it could be volume, could be uh, how it ge geographical is selling. Maybe something is, uh, so for example, we had a vegetarian line of uh, uh, pizzas. And we really saw a big difference between city area and village areas. <laughs> uh, so it's still interesting to understand, okay, maybe it's too early to do this already on a nationwide level. And so that's what you, what you can learn, but yeah, mainly based on benchmarks, based on expectations that we have if we, let's say, incorporate new trends. And yeah, with that, you still need really good people and category managers and the input of franchisees to uh, yeah, ensure that you have the right assortment and menu. Awesome, awesome. I think uh, we will slowly go uh, to the Q&A. Going to the questions for the Q&A. So how do you track the operational metrics from the delivery platforms? like driver wait times, open rates, etc. cetera. Yeah, it's, that, that's more difficult. So uh, we partially can measure those, uh, those things. So we know, of course, when an order came in and uh, within what time it was delivered, for example. 
Um, so those kind of things we can track and, and we can compare it towards what we have in the overall system. Um, but some things we do separately. So we check, we check the reviews, for example, based uh, to, to also compare with our own. But if I understand it, like you have more data from the orders from your own platform. Yeah. So actually you measure or steer more the company based on that data than the data from the platforms, no, because so that's more limited. No? Yeah, operational data, not really. Yeah, so when an order comes in, we, we still know, no matter what channel, yeah, so uh, just the takeaway on Uber order, it comes in similar in uh, like uh, our own orders. Yeah, so in the kitchen screen, yeah, right? In the kitchen screen. So all operational steps are measured in the same way. So we can see if was it in time, was it not in time? Was it the make time, the oven time, or the delivery time? Uh, where can we optimize? So for those two, we can measure it both actually in the system. Uh, another question, like, what do you consider the biggest opportunity for the online proposition of New York Pizza, but gen restaurant chains in general? Uh, well, I think uh, loyalty is uh, really important in general as a proposition, but let's say to build up a relationship with your, with your customers because yeah. I think a lot of consumers, and I think that that uh, that for all markets are uh, not more not, not that loyal to brands anymore. They're like, I'm hungry. Let's have uh, let's have food, not even pizza. And on those platforms, they can easily check out which restaurant is. Um, so that's more like a person in the supermarket almost. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's about how, as a brand, can you be relevant, and how can you, let's say, create a relationship with your consumers. So I think loyalty is really important in that to make sure that they know who you are, what benefits they have, that they trust you. And if you, let's say, spend 20, 30 euros or something in that range, just like, uh, let's spend that New York pizza because uh, they're always in time. It's always good. And uh, no doubt. And, uh, and I get something in return if I order again. Okay. Uh, yeah, and this is something, of course, yeah, it, it, it is a balance huh, with these orders from, from Just Eat or Uber Eats and your own platform. Like, uh, yeah, how do you balance that? Because Exactly. That's it. It so, almost sounds like yeah. a supermarket customer. Yeah, for, yeah. It's not not even and a fan or something. That much of a balance. So it's also a lot of the times it's a different audience. Eh? So indeed, it's a bit uh, good. The supermarket is a good comparison. If people walk into the supermarket and you only have an own store, you don't have your product in the supermarket. Yeah, how are you going to sell your product towards those people that are hungry and walking into your store? So I think it's really important to be there on those third-party platforms. A lot of consumers are there, not by definition in the market for pizza in our case, but there to have food. And we're one of the, the restaurants that can supply them in a really good way. So you should be there. And of course, there's a bit of an overlap, but I think that's where you should collaborate in a good way. And also yeah, have something in place to make sure that you have benefits for loyal consumers, like a loyalty program. Yeah, yeah. so what I'm hearing is like, hey, compared to the platforms, that loyalty program is that incentive to it's, order? It's not the holy grail. So in the end, in my opinion, you should be there where the consumer is. Exactly. And those consumers are also in the supermarket or third party platforms. So that's where you are if you're hungry. Uh, so you should be there. And in addition to that, I think uh, it's really good to think about what do we have to offer extra? What, how can we have added value as a brand? Okay. Another question. Uh, we saw that in the Netherlands you opened your 300 store. Yeah. Like, Maybe you're not allowed to reveal the secret, but yeah, how how can be because it's a small country and yeah, well, it's it's a big accomplishment of uh, our franchisees, our development and operations department. So I think we have a really good concept with New York Pizza, uh, and uh, if you operate and run the store really well, you can have a you can have a good living. So it's about having a good business, and we know how to operate in smaller areas in a good way, and we even see that in smaller areas. We are performing even better sometimes compared to high density areas where there's a lot of competition. And so if we're there and there's a fantastic product, a good delivery, and uh, we can already benefit from a good brand uh, brand uh, awareness. Yeah, it goes by itself almost. Okay, interesting. So yeah, it's a collaboration and especially a really good franchisees that can uh, be entrepreneurial locally and uh, start up a good store. Okay. Uh... I see the next question coming. Can you go down? Uh, what, what are some upcoming projects maybe for this year? Uh, maybe you don't want to reveal it, but maybe there is something you want to share like, uh, yeah, on, yeah on, expan on expansion, that's the question. Um, well, uh, yeah, we, uh, we think that we can still grow in a good way uh, together with our franchisees. So 
we will uh, continue like the last couple of years with opening up stores and what i already said also in the smaller cities we see that our concept and our brand is really is working really well so yeah, in the end we will uh, continue with what we do best delivering the most tasty pizza at every doorstep cool i uh, some i get a question like uh, time to ticket is something that uh, this person read a lot about uh, on online marketing. What is time to ticket for you or can you maybe explain that? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, it's more to define than I think for, because I'm not sure what the definition is of time to ticket. I can imagine that maybe lead time if, if for advertising, how many times you need to show somebody an ad or something before somebody uh, orders or creates a ticket. But it, it, yeah, for us, it's let's say finding the optimal media mix. So do we need to show you an ad six times, 10 times, three times, or do we show you an ad first time and, and the ne next time another okay. ad? Yeah, we, we use a lot of tooling for that to do so, and, and specialists from agencies. For me, time to ticket means from going to, let's say you already did that yeah. process of getting someone to the website, yeah. from the website till the checkout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the amount of steps a consumer takes from starting to finishing well, an order? I think um, if you uh, check out our uh, website versus the app, you can already see some differences. But the time to ticket is not for us a really important KPI. The conversion rate in the end, together with the average order value and balancing those two is, uh, is uh, are two important KPIs. So does it matter for me if somebody is through three, four, five or 10 minutes on the website versus one minute? For me, it's important that they order so that yeah. the conversion is there and that they order in a good way so that we have a really good uh, average order value. So recently, we even uh, uh, introduced an extra step in the process of ordering. Okay. With that, consumers order more okay. uh, because they are informed in a better way. They can see in a better way what they order. So uh, for me, time to ticket in this case, if we use this definition, is not the most important. No, thing. true, true. It's maybe an underlying one. Yeah. For you, key is that conversion yeah. in that yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think. Ah, okay. There are some new questions coming in. Yeah. How do you solve the challenge that people don't eat pizza every day? Do you complement your product line with other products? Well, partly. So uh, there are enough people uh, that, that can order pizza, so we don't need them to order every day. I think that would not be good if they <laughs> order pizza every day. But yeah, we, we broaden our assortment a bit, but the core is still pizza. Uh, we are New York pizza and we also uh, stay with our core. But of course, we also have some pastas, uh, side dishes that you could order. So it's more, it's, it's a balance of making sure that we reach out to an audience that is broad enough, because we know that, pizza, that people won't eat, eat pizza every day. And to also have, let's say, an assortment that is attractive enough, especially also when one household is ordering, that there's enough to choose from. And that, for example, one person can order a pasta and the other can order a pizza, for example. Okay, good one. Uh, do you have any tips on targeting and drawing the younger generation to pick your brand, like the 18 to 25 year olds online and offline? Yeah, so uh, yeah, we, we saw the same challenge, so thanks for the question. Uh, it's, it's difficult to, let's say, reach out to that specific audience. That it's the audience that we would like to recruit to work in our stores, but it's also the audience that we know from, and we, I call it genera genera of, uh, Gen Z, Gen Z, Generation yeah. Z. Um, th this is the audience, they are not reading newspapers, they're not reading magazines, they're not watching television, they're not listening to radio, it's all on demand, more social media oriented. TikTok? So indeed, uh, we started out with a new TikTok uh, strategy last year. We tested a lot of things already. Uh, but we now incorporated a real Gen Z strategy within our strategy to, let's say, reach out to them. With, uh, so the media mix changed a bit. We work together with influencers, for example. Yeah. So with that, yeah, we as a brand uh, are more relevant towards those audiences. And we see it in our brand tracking reports as well. Eh? So the preference of these young audiences is growing with our new strategy. Uh, so we use other types of media and other types of creatives to reach out to them. And yeah, for example, TikTok is an important channel in that. Okay. Another good question. Like uh, your own channels are vitally important for the growth. How do you get new customers on these channels initially? I think we spoke a lot about it. Yeah. But maybe to answer yeah. this question. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's, it's good to give an example. Uh, so uh, uh, as an example, for example, members, that's exclusively to our own platform. That's step one already. Yeah. And that you can get benefits, etc. But what we do is acquisition campaigns. Yeah, so, for example, 
uh, a certain discount or a free product when you let's say place your first order to really do acquisition in a good way th those are things that we use to convince people to do that first order to, or to become a member for so people. maybe imagine uh, imagine you would be a new brand that launches an app yeah then maybe for the first when they install do the first order via the app a big discount or maybe even a free Definitely. product on yeah, yeah. on a crazy campaign yeah. yeah so we have periods and we did it with the introduction for example and it was quite successful but also in between we sometimes have promotions that become a member and get x for free or yeah and that's of course something we align on with our franchisees because again we cannot give away everything for free we also don't want that but we of course need to have something that is appealing enough to make sure that you think okay let's do this okay okay yeah, actually more questions for me because sometimes ha, to push something you want to do a discount yeah. to give something free but how do you make sure it's always good with the ROI, right? Yeah. That you keep that balance because giving yeah. and also yeah. getting, right? Yeah, so it's, it's not that, you cannot say that easily that uh, we put in uh, five euros and we get out 30 because then you would only look to that order and to that transaction. Uh, what we do, but that's more complex, is we look at customer lifetime value. And yeah. so if we make sure that somebody orders for the first time, could be that that first time is quite expensive to do so. But we know if somebody becomes a member or a customer, and that consumer is, let's say, helped in the coupe, so is happy with the order, has a good NPS. We know that X times a year, they come back. And th then you can say, within a year, this is the value of the customer. Okay. So maybe a customer is worth 1,000 euros, 500 euros, or 100 euros, and it depends on the business that you're in. But if you know that, you also know what to invest before to get them in. Okay, so data is key for this, yeah. and also that uh, loyalty yeah. program, membership yeah. program to try to drive that retention. Yeah, definitely. Because otherwise, you invest and just and the investment yeah. for that first order is, like you said, yeah. maybe too big to get it. You yeah, need maybe four, or five orders for that to to get definitely. it back. Yeah, and it's even more important to make sure that uh, getting them in is quite easy if you have an interesting offer. But keeping them in, uh, you need a perfect operation for that, a good delivery, a good product. And that's even more important than a good loyalty program, for example. Uh, the product at first should be really good. Therefore, our dough, our secret is helping us. And our fr and collaboration with the franchisees is really important. They need to deliver upon the promise and we need to do that together. Okay. Uh, a question that I will ask, and let's say if you, if you want to share that. Uh, yeah. How do you manage promotions on the platforms versus your own channels? And yeah can you give bigger incentives on the platforms than your own channel it's a question i'm not sure if you yeah yeah so yeah, we we are testing a lot with it so uh, there's not one answer to that we are constantly looking okay how can we be interesting towards both audiences as as said uh the third parties have an own audience we have our own audience and there's a bit of an overlap so it's constantly testing what works best and also collaborating in a good way with the third parties yeah definitely yeah. I think uh, I think we're coming. Uh, uh, some questions are coming in here. Ah, okay, you have talked about gamification aspect of new customers acquisition, existing customers retention. Yeah, are these standard actions options within as for D to 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 view this? No. Yeah. So that, I think that's that's good to understand. So as for D is for us, let's say the operational system and our e-commerce commerce platform. And all those things like gamification, yeah, so loyalty program is also part of it in the in the basics. But if we want to do something with a Spotify playlist or a game, or we want to, let's say, send out a mailing towards those consumers, and I want to send you the vegetarian options because you like meat, right? <laughs> <laughs> and all the way around for me, maybe, we use other types of tooling for that. And we connect it to the database that yeah we have uh, with S4D. We bring that data towards those marketing tools, I call it. And with those marketing tools, we can, let's say, define who do you want to email, send an email, when, with what message. And that's not an S4D, that's, that's a separate system that we use in Connect. Yeah, true. And yeah. S4D, you run the e-commerce and operations, yeah. and then and you capture the, all the data the points, data, yeah. and to put that in another system to also combine yeah. that with your ads that you're yeah. doing, the mailings that you're doing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, create yeah. audiences. For ads, there's a different system. For mailings, there's a different system. So we use multiple systems and based on the data that we gather in one place, we activate that data and segment on it and test on it. And well, that's something that the marketing team and uh, our agencies uh, work together on and uh, try to benefit from. Okay, I think uh, yeah, I think we're coming uh, we're coming to an end. Uh, we did 45 minutes and then another uh, almost 50 minutes Q&A. 
First of all, Joost, thank you for, for sharing your insights. Yeah. And again, for the audience, if you want to connect with Joost, connect yeah. with him on LinkedIn. He's Thanks open to that. Yeah. Uh, same for me, connect with me on LinkedIn if you have more questions. And uh, do that. And see you next time. Thank you. Thanks for your time.